am not too far from on time. Um, so exhausted. You don't know what it's like to have to sanitize all your groceries. Well, maybe some of you do. Boy, that's a hoot, isn't it? I'll tell you. Well, you know how often I start with, what are you wearing? Well, today I'm wearing black. I'm wearing black because we have to um, acknowledge, you know, where we are at right now. And, um, and it's not necessarily the best place to be. This morning, my day started with someone sending me a video of a nurse. Uh, and she was talking about what it was like to be uh, where she was and to be doing the job she was doing and all the death and all the suffering and the having to um, to deal with the people who uh, to, she's their only she's their only connection very often and you know that that put a very heavy uh, a heavy feeling on me and I know I've said it before but I want to say it again um, we want to uh, realize that um, this is really scary and it's really negative uh, bad experience wouldn't ask for it and we are I, I, what am I what, what I consider one of my jobs to do my mission is to learn live and share the uh, the preachings the universal teachings of Jesus and know and love God as I inspire others to do likewise so I want to love God I want to inspire others that's that's my goal but it's not always easy uh, because sometimes when you're positive people th think you don't realize the impact of something I didn't want to watch that video today I wanted to just skip past it I know people are suffering I know people are suffering but I made myself watch it because it's a real reality check. No matter what we want to do, we, we have to acknowledge this thing is happening and we don't know the outcome. And because of that, we are grieving. We don't know. I, I, this, all this, I, like I say, I refuse to call this a new normal. To me, this is a current experience we're having. At the same time, just like you, I ride up and down on the roller coaster of uh, being positive and standing up for, you know, God's in charge, no matter what God's in charge. And that is true. And then we've got the fear. What if it happens to me? And then we've got the anger. This isn't fair. Some people are dealing with depression. You know, I, if, if from my heart and soul, if you think you're starting to get depressed, reach out to someone. There are people online. Don't forget, you've got clergy people. You've got um, uh, so many places you can you can reach out to friends, a friend you can talk to, and and it's okay. You're human, for God's sake. So am I. But I do encourage you to to keep reaching back up. Try to get back up into the positive in the midst of the negative. So. I think we are past, you know, there's five stages of grief, and that is fear, uh, the loss itself, the grief, the anger, the depression, and one of them is denial. I don't know, if I could see your hands, and I would say, does anyone think they're still in denial about this? Man, a lot of people are. And in unity, we don't deny that something is occurring. We deny that we are not going to let it run our life. And so when, if, if you find you're getting uh, sad, upset, or whatever, um, try to find someone to hang on to, to help you up, and, uh, and know that it's, we don't know the future, but if we believe that, oopsie, oh my goodness, I lost you. I, hang on, guys, I'm going to get you back. My dog on, I got this little thing. It looks like, looks. I can't get it in the camera. It looks like a little pig. 
and it holds my camera up, and I got to stick it. Well, how's that for a little adventure? Okay, let's see if I'm still with you. Yep, still with you. Ha ha, very funny. I know that, Cheryl. I know that, Cheryl, because she laughs at my silly things. So let's go back to where we were. We were being a little bit more serious at the moment. Um, do, you, do you think you're in denial? People are. They're out there. They're uh, avoiding the uh, close contact. They're not wearing face masks. And uh, I'll tell you about something that's scary it happened to me today. I was unloading my groceries, and I shared a video. And if you haven't seen it, uh, you can go to YouTube and look up how to unpack your groceries. And it's a man with gray hair, a little little beard, and you can see he's got a piece of blue tape in the middle of, her, of his table. That's the one I watch. So we had to... Um, we had to figure out uh, how to make sure everything is sanitary. So you got your clean spot, you got your dirty spot, you got your groceries outside. I was determined not to even bring a grocery bag in. And everything that I brought in, the bag went outside and the groceries I bought in, everything got wiped down. My hands were wiped down. I, you know, I kept cleaning my hands. I used a disinfectant psh, 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 like that. Everything I did. And then after I was done, I took a shower because I wanted to get anything that could be. Took my coat off, put it in the wash. I don't want any part of these germs. So I come out of the shower and I blew my hair dry. And as I'm walking from the shower to through my bedroom, I feel a little something in my throat. And it's like, oh God, am I getting a sore throat? We don't want to get a sore throat. We know where that can lead. And it really hits you then that that's how all those people in the, that are in the hospital felt. That's how they felt. Oh, my God. You know, is this happening? Well, it, I'll say it's gone. I'm thinking what it was was I kept spraying that disinfectant and <laughs> probably inhaled some of it. But um, what, what we don't know the future, but we have to have faith that God loves us and that this is going to come out okay. It is definitely something we have to learn about, you know? And so I want to talk about, uh, there's, a, there's a saying about getting in your fighting shape. Is it fighting weight, fighting shape, whatever. But the one thing we can do right now is get in our fighting shape. And there's a number of ways we do it. This morning... I had so much to do. I knew the groceries were coming. I had to get ready to make all my stations to clean them down and everything. And I thought, well, maybe today I'll skip jazzercise. You know, because when everything was fine, we went Monday through Friday. We didn't do Saturday and Sunday. But now I think it's more important than ever to do even Saturday and Sunday. Why? When I'm jazzercising, I sweat. And my lungs, that's, they call them aerobics for nothing, you know? So I get the breath and I do the exercise and I, I um, because I want to be in my fighting shape. I know a lot of people that have passed away from this have, have been young, healthy people. I'm older, I'm healthy, but whatever it is, I want to know if anything happens to me, it wasn't because I was careless, okay? God gave me life, and I want to live that life. I want to use it right. You know, it's like, I, I, please don't be offended if this is you, okay? That's your issue, my issue. Um, I would not jump out of an airplane. I just wouldn't. I would not, what do they call it? Rock face climbing? I would not do that. You know, I have a hard time sometimes climbing the stairs without having a good tumble. So I'm trying to honor the body that I have. Am I perfect? No. Am I working on it? Yes. So that's a part of my fighting, my, my, my fighting thing, my getting, getting uh, fighting strong, getting in fighting shape is that I jazzercise. I try to eat right. We need those vitamins and minerals. I, uh, we have to take care of our body, our mind, our emotions, and our soul. In unity, we say that the, the soul is the, the part of our consciousness that grows and changes. 
and it's the part you know that that processes everything that we do in a spiritual manner so we got to take care of all that don't we we don't have to take care of spirit because spirit is it's our divine self and it's perfect and it couldn't it really couldn't get the flu or anything else it's so you want to also get in your fighting shape so how do we do that exercise sleep drink plenty of water uh, all these things are physical take care of your mind remember the exercise we did where we took a calendar and we colored in each spot according to the color that we felt that day and i said look out if you start finding that you're coloring in a lot of gray and brown your mind's not going in a good place so it's time to and we don't always know that you know that's like they say that um you're by the time you feel thirsty it's too late <laughs> you should be drinking you're already dehydrated so keep on keep on making sure you're doing all those physical things for our uh depression or or uh, sadness our grief and stuff like that um we prayer and meditation really is really is helpful clearing your mind we talked the other day about watching funny videos to to get you in another place because it's really good for you another kind of video movie i would like to suggest is um uplifting movies there's a lot of uplifting movies the help was a wonderful uplifting movie um and if anybody thinks of an uplifting movie put it in the comments and somebody else can see it and go oh yeah or if i need an uplifting movie i can look at it and see it there overcoming movies you know one of my favorite overcoming movies uh and, and it's not deep some are deep mine is not deep um it is called cool runnings and if you haven't seen cool runnings you should it's funny and it's deep and it's fun and it's about the jamaican bobsled team now can you imagine being from jamaica and having a bobsled team yeah it's all and it's but it's a true story it's real and they made it to the olympics so many things can be done if we open ourselves to the possibility they can be done so I'm really encouraging you today to open your mind and your heart to the possibility these are the things you do to get in fighting shape okay we don't know we don't know who's gonna get it but if we do we want to go into it as strong and as healthy as we can and that's just plain common sense but one of the most important parts is attitude how's your attitude do you have an attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. i try to keep my attitude in gratitude except this morning and i uh oh i can't see the names from here but i think he just stopped in hey key uh, and I did jazzercise, uh, thank God, our jazzercise um, uh, club what, membership, whatever, we can go online and do jazzercise. And this morning, I just said it a few minutes ago, I thought about all the other things I had to do. But I knew I wanted to do my breathing, I wanted to do my hard work. And I got to tell you something, he worked our butts off today. She really did and i was sweating and, and that's what we need to do that's how you get in fighting shape can you imagine stepping into the ring to, to have a, a you know a fight with you know, you know that kind of fight and not having practice well i wouldn't go there you know it's like childbirth um it's like you have to prepare you have to do the things take care of yourself and man you gotta be fighting shape when you have a baby that is not an easy task. And I remember the each one, I keep thinking, how did I let that happen again? But we did. So, so I had that attitude where I'm doing this. And I'm kind of glancing at the clock and I'm going, well, maybe, maybe I should take a break because I got to get cleaned up and ready for those groceries. And I kept looking and then we'd be doing another, I'll wait till after this routine. Well, I'll wait till the other, this routine. And then what happens is while you're 
while you're doing your thing, uh, I could see on the screen how many people were watching with, uh, uh, they were jazzercising. They weren't watching, they were jazzercising. And that's a great commitment. Now my videos, it doesn't, I, people don't know it's gonna be on. Sometimes they show, sometimes they don't. But afterwards I see how many people check in and watch it. But I was watching the numbers when I was in jazzercise, there was 33, there was 36. I said, I ain't quitting. I ain't quitting. I'm going to keep doing this. And thank God for that. I'm, I'm a carrot person. Dangle a carrot out in front of me and I'm going to go chasing it down the street. So you want to have a good attitude. Now comes my grocery order. It came in and it was almost $300 worth of groceries. But it's going to last me two months. Probably more. So when the groceries this morning, I went to check my order, Peapot order online, and I find out they took out a bunch of my stuff because it was, they ran out. And I started to get an attitude. Here is something I was anticipating in that order like you wouldn't believe. And I know not everybody is a vegetarian, but I love the, um, the vegetarian sausage patties. Oh, my stars. And the way I eat them is I make oatmeal and then I, uh, I crumble in one of those uh, sausage patties. I put a little cheese. Oh my gosh, it's very good. And I thought, I've been waiting all this time for the sausage patties and I didn't get them. But I had a whole bunch of groceries. What was I complaining about? It's very easy to fall into a state of feeling like, Oh, golly, you know, I didn't get my way. I didn't get what I wanted. I wouldn't have wanted that. And, and we're, we, we have so much. Oh, my God, we're in a home. We got, we got a roof over our head. We got, we got decent food. Uh, even if it's not my veggie sausage patties, I have plenty. Why gripe about the food that you have to disinfect? Because you got food. You know, there have always been plagues and floods and earthquakes and tsunamis and horrible things. It's not personal. It's principle. It's what happens. What's important in our lives is how do we handle? What do we do with what happens? I'm feeling like it's time to put my little, um, now, okay, for those of you that aren't familiar with watching this, you're going to see it backward. I apologize. And there's no way to flip it around. I tried it. Some people can flip. My phone can't do that. So um, you're going to see this backward. But if you check my video after when it goes on, on, when I put it on YouTube, it'll be frontward, okay? And did you notice my hair's getting wonkier every day? Okay, so when we talk about our mind... your mind. We have two parts. We have four parts. I call them the four quadrants of consciousness. Whoops. Okay. I should call my sister over except we have to be separated. Okay. So this is higher consciousness. This is lower consciousness. This is intuitive. I'm going to do this like you're getting, you're getting thoughts from spirit. And this is sensing and this is this is just it's like you sense the difference is like when you walk in somewhere and you see someone and um they give you a real positive or a negative vibe that is sensing you're sensing their energy remember everything is energy so this is intuitive that's that idea that pops into your mind there's many things that could be it could be it could be a message from spirit. It could be, uh, it could be um, uh, just your own inner being knowing something. It could be God. It could be an angel. God knows. God knows. So this is the intuitive hearing from spirit. This is the sensing feeling, actually feeling an energy. So it only makes sense then that this is, this is thinking. This is thought. And 
this is emotion. It's feeling. So these are human. That doesn't mean they're bad. We're all human. But our job is to remember that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, not, I'm sorry, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, not, not humans having a spiritual experience. Human beings having a spiritual experience happens all of a sudden out of the blue, um, or it's going to church. Going to church is good, but going to church, you don't do all your spiritual growth just by going to church. By the way, I, I was just flipped out when I saw this because it happens so often. Today's message is let go, let God from the daily word. And the affirmation is I yield to the source of divine wisdom. I thought that was exciting because my real theme for today is about surrendering to what is. If you spend all your time and energy fighting it, you're upset, you don't like what's going on, it's not fair, I'm afraid, I'm anxious. You're not going to have a good quality of, of your life. Whether you make it through this or whether you don't, if you want to have, I mean, imagine, let's say, let's say um, a, a soothsayer told you that uh, you are going to die in a week. What would you do? How would you spend that time? Would you spend it with people you love? Would you spend it being nice, making amends, whatever? Isn't that the way we should live every day? We have to be brave. We have to go on. We have to have fun. We have to laugh. And when we have to cry, it's okay to cry. But we want to do the best we can. We have the power. We have the power to rise above it. We absolutely do. Watch Cool Runnings. Um, it is all in our attitude, but we have to surrender to the fact that we don't know what's coming and to be okay with it. Can you surrender to the fact that you don't know what's coming and treasure every moment you have? Would you get in a car if you were obsessing on the fact that you might get into an accident and get hurt or killed? Would you? What, what would you do? You know, we put ourselves in all kinds of, on a roller coaster. Would you get on a roller coaster if you knew it was going to break? There's something about that thrill, though, isn't there? There's something about that, ooh, I don't know. That's a good thrill. That's, that's called a controlled, controlled uh, anxiety. And they actually say that when you do things like that, you get yourself scared, but in the end, it's okay. That's a healthy thing because in a way, your mind says, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Um, we want to realize that no matter what's going on with all the plagues and all the hurricanes and all the floods and the tsunamis and everything, that in fact, life goes on. And that our life may be different. But it will. It will go on. And, and you know, you're going to see, you see a lot of pictures and, and hear a lot about back in the, the, the uh, flu, the Spanish flu in 1918. Uh, fortunately, my grandparents came through that, okay, because I have my mom and dad. <laughs> so, uh, we, we, what was I going to say? God, I lost my train of thought. I started talking about my mom and, oh, yeah, I know. We're in a much better place. No matter how crazy it is, yeah, things are wrong. Yeah, there's shortages that shouldn't be happening. People can't get the stuff they need. But look at all the people that are coming together to make it better. I mean, I think that is, is one of the most important things. We have this way that we can talk. I hope I can encourage you. You're just being here encourages me. Do what you can to keep your attitude up. And you know, someone said on the news today, life is never going to be like it was. There is what will be. We have to actually reconfigure. What if we were to think about, and you can do this after, you can do it for the whole day. What, what, what did you feel was wrong with the world? 
And you can have any, of course, you know, we want world peace. One of the things that is important to me is um, when we talk about being divided, being separated, we are, you know, I mean, there's the political stuff, there's, there's racial, there's, there's so much division. And people have said that over and over. There's such division. So when we come out of this, we're going to say, in what way can we live to avoid being separated? We are now separated. We held thoughts of division in our mind for so long. Now we're divided. What a perfect time to think about getting together. Find ways. If this is where division is. This is where, if this is, says me, me, my, mind. This says, we, our, ours. Don't you want to be up here? This is, this is where it works. War doesn't live up here. Discrimination doesn't live up here. We are all individual expressions of spirit. So, if we change our attitude, and if we start thinking, why do you think you can't change the world? Of course you can change the world. We will do that as we keep a good attitude. As we meditate. This is where, this is where ideas, good ideas come from. There's good ideas and there's not so good ideas. This is where when you pray and meditate, you get good ideas. Isn't that exciting? That's where the good ideas come from. And this is where... Fear, anxiety, jealousy. This is where all that comes from. This is a human thought, and this is intuitive, knowing something is greater. Did you ever have a minute when you knew, you knew that wasn't true, you knew something was greater? Imagine that I had, I had uh, two apples, and I said, you will see, I have three apples. And in your head, you go, what is she crazy? There's no three apples here. What if, when you heard things like that, you would pay attention to the inside of you that says, that's not right. Because it's already in there. You know what's right. And therefore, if you listen, it's way easier to listen when you're up here. This is in a, this is in a state of knowing it's all going to come out okay. Come out okay. This is in a, you, the more you think about and fear, the, the less you're going to be able to rise above it. We want to rise above it. Next Thursday, so because I, I know I'm way ahead of it, but I wanted to talk about it today because I think it's important. Um, on, uh, in Gethsemane, on uh, what we call Holy Thursday, Jesus prayed in the garden. And he was all by himself. And he said, well, his, his, his guys were over in the grove. And he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass by me. Nevertheless, thy will be done. I would love for this cup to pass by all of us. I would love for it to go away and never come back. But we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But he said, nevertheless, thy will be done. Good is going to come again. And we can make that good better than it ever was. Because that's the, God's will for us is good and only good. So I'm inviting you to stay strong to use your creative visualization. We talked about that the other day. We talked about, about closing your eyes and envisioning, you know, that curve that is always on the TV. Show that curve coming down. Get that vision in your head. Hold it. For your own health every day, Breathe and say, I am a radiating center of divine love. 
God's healing power flows through me now. I am whole. I am healthy. And when we think about all the folks who are not experiencing that right this minute, we can pray for them too. We can say the sweet Holy Spirit of God flows to you and through you right now, sweeping out any pain, sweeping out suffering, sweeping out distress, sweeping out anything less than perfect being. I believe that stuff works. And I invite you to give it a try. What do you got to lose? Sometimes we have to even surrender to our own good. So how am I making it through this? I'm making it by practicing these principles. I'm making it by trying to keep my mind up here in the realm of possibility, not down here in fear. Yes. Do I visit there? Yes. Do I want to be there? No. We all have a better chance of coming through this rip-roaring and better than ever if we keep our mind in the, in the intuitive sensing realm as opposed to the thought and emotion. Remember, emotion is an energy. Everything is energy. You want to keep that energy positive and you have the power to do it. So I'm real excited. I'm going to run now. My son and I are going to have a video chat with, well, with his family, and I'm so excited. Did you talk to your family today? Have you talked to your family in a little bit? If not, give them a call, because we can all hold each other up. Meanwhile, you have a great day, and uh, we will see you. <laughs> By the way, I, I, I did write words. They'll be forward when I put in the YouTube. All righty. Well, many blessings to you. I hope I see you again tomorrow, and God bless.